All right. We're streaming live. Audra, is it okay if we start since we're streaming or? We will, let me have okay. to send her the link oh, real quick. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's all right. Okay, Audra sent you the link. Are we good, Audra? Are you on mute? Okay, we're ready. Okay. All right, thank you, Audra and Forrest. Uh, welcome everyone to the special board meeting for Monday, March, or March, May, seems like March, I don't know, uh, May 18th. Uh, I think I sent out a message, was kind of, hopefully we won't have as many technical difficulties, and I think Aaron has an update on kind of the, some procedures, but I'll probably once we get, uh, after we approve the agenda and move into the presentation, try to limit video just to save on bandwidth. Uh, anyway, um, with that, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? I second. Was that Drew or was that Justin? Yes, Drew. All right, Karen moved, Drew seconded to approve the agenda. Karen? Aye. Drew? Aye. Chris? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Uh, Kaya? Aye. Justin? Aye. And I myself. All right. I will turn this over now to uh, Aaron and the folks at uh, DLR and the County Gordon. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, we are excited um, to share tonight the progress on the Tonymoxie High School bond project. Um, we have a design development update that we're going to go through with you and I um, hope you guys are um, really impressed with all the, the progress that's been made and the images that you've, you've seen and we'll um, see some new ones tonight. So here's um, our agenda for this evening. Uh, we're going to kind of go through um, some overview and then uh, DLR will walk through the actual design development portion um, and then we'll get into some budget and schedule discussions with McCowan. Um, so as uh, Jim alluded to, I think we're going to try if you are not speaking tonight um, or when you are not speaking, if um, we'll keep the video turned off to try and help with uh, technology issues. Um, and if you have issues um, to log in with your call in on the phone um, and try and stay muted uh, when listening in. If you have comments, um, we are gonna try to hold comments till the end of the presentation because hopefully our goal is to get through and then hopefully address most of the comments throughout the presentation. Um, if you do have something that um, you wanna send through in the chat function. I will try and keep an eye on that and jump in 
uh, to the presentation if we need to, or uh, write it down to address at the end. So um, with that, we'll jump right in here. Um, so just expectations for tonight's uh, presentation. Um, we met back in February to present the schematic design progress for the project. So tonight is very similar to that, um, except as the design development, which is just taking that schematic design to the next stage. Um, so where we're going after design development, um, we are starting into the construction document phase of the project, which we'll get into um, you know, very specific details and specifications of uh, materials. So where are we at with the design development phase? What you can expect to see in these drawings and budgeting um, is the site plans with more detailed grading and landscape details, uh, de detailed architectural space layouts and elevate interior and exterior elevations of um, rooms and the exteriors of the building. Um, you will see some preliminary room finish schedules uh, indicating what finishes are for which spaces um, and overall uh, preliminary color selections for the interior and exterior of the building. Um, we are not going to show in great detail tonight, but we'll discuss a little bit of um, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing um, finish schedules, what type of uh, equipment uh, is included in the project at this stage. Um, then we'll also be talking about uh, further refine, refine budget, which uh, aligns with the specific materials that have been selected so far, as well as what you will see has actually been developed to go into each individual space. So um, as an overview, <clears throat> I just wanted to um, kind of make a comment that I, I think this team has done a really great job dealing with kind of an unprecedented situation of um, gathering all of this information and progressing the design and the budget um, virtually for most of our design development or about half of the design development. So um, I felt like everybody really kept on task and worked through um, some adjustments in our, in our work life to, uh, to get this together. So um, I wanna commend everybody for that. Um, so the good news is that we'll be presenting a project that is tracking on budget and with some, and we'll explain some adjustments in the scope, um, both up and down, and um, that we are meeting all the bond issue goals um, of this project. So really at the end of the evening, we'll be asking for um, the Board of Education's acceptance of the overall design development progress and budget so that we can continue to proceed forward with construction documents. So this slide is a summary of the bullet points from the bond issue. So just wanted to um, hit on, as we said, making sure that we are um, designing to and meeting all of the criteria for the bond project. So we'll talk through these, um, DLR will, will hit on these during their presentation, but um, we're focused on safety and security enhancements, uh, new classrooms and educational communities, um, new consolidated kitchen and cafeteria, the competition gym and support spaces for improved physical education, uh, West Campus renovations for district support, um, code required update to existing gymnasium. Um, we'll address this a little bit, but uh, as DLR has dug into that design, they have discovered that the previous improvements done meet all the um, required codes there. And parking lot improvements, um, and traffic flow around the site has been very much focused on during the process and the demolition of the 1960s building and um, district office. So um, with that, we'll turn it over to DLR to go through their design presentation. 
Okay, great. Hi, this is Robin with DLR Group, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how we started out um, our design development phase. Um, we sent out questionnaires to teachers and staff uh, to ask them about their needs for their new spaces. Uh, the questionnaires indicated that the, the teachers' needs for equipment and furniture and casework, and overall, they, were, they got to tell us about um, their wants for their new spaces. Our next step was to actually meet with the teachers in person. And so the design team took two days um, in the early part of, uh, or late part of February, early part of March. Um, we met with staff and teachers um, in their, at the high school. And then um, from there, we discussed the general layout of their rooms as, as well as we got into some specific needs for their classrooms. And so we took all of that really great information that we got from the questionnaires and the in-person meetings and we started to put those um, on our plans. So we did have to do a second round of meetings um, with, with a select group of, of teachers um, for some of those spaces that um, really required a lot of attention, a lot of like plumbing and casework modifications like art or science or facts. And that, this is when um, sort of the COVID-19 uh, issues hit and with all the restrictions. So we, we did those meetings via Zoom um, and so Mark uh, Farrar was very instrumental in helping us um, set, set all those meetings up with those teachers. So we appreciate that. So really a lot of time and effort was spent on, on documenting all of this information um, for the, the teaching and learning spaces. So with that, we're gonna start with uh, the site plans. Thanks Robin. This is Josh Earhart, DLR Group. Um, if you recall, a couple of months ago, when we were going through the, the schematic design process, um, our overarching goal with the site development was, was really safety and security, and as Aaron mentioned, improving that site circulation. Um, during the pre-bond phase, we understood that we had some existing constraints with uh, Highway 24 to the north of us and the existing ball fields and west campus to the west of us, a floodplain to the south of us the football field, practice field, and Main Street to the east. So we were really kind of tied into here. Plus we were adding a substantial amount of, of buildings. So we're looking at, well, what, what does safety mean and how do we improve it? And one of our main goals always with a site like this is separating bus and staff from students and trying to streamline that as much as possible. So if you recall back in the schematic phase, we were able to separate the two and identify where the uh, car drop off versus the bus drop off was where staff could park and where students could park. And then we were also tasked while doing all this to hit the existing student uh, parking count and staff count. Um, we were able to do so in schematic design. And if you go on to, thank you, the design development, we were tasked to add another layer onto that. And so what we did was we added an additional 50 plus stalls to the student parking lot, make sure there's an ample amount of parking over there. And we developed this, you could say a campus drive, if you will, pulled off to the parking on the east side of the site. The goal of this was to draw the traffic off of State Avenue or Highway 24 and Main Street a little bit quicker so we, we can kind of avoid that backup, that, that backup on State Avenue in particular that a lot of the board was concerned with. KDOT isn't very flexible with moving these curb cuts. So this was our way of trying to improve that site circulation. Um, so we were able to achieve that, increase the student parking count to about one stall for every 1.7 students, which that's good. A lot of times we go for one stall for every two students. So we're, we're doing better than that mark. Um, if we want to go to the next slide, we can kind of speak a little bit more specific about some other enhancements here. The entry plaza of the north, you'll see a rendering there, but we started identifying some of these seat wall elements and flagpoles and uh, paved decorative concrete areas, as well as the outdoor commons plaza area. You also see a rendering of that as well. Um, one of the additions we did uh, make since SD is the addition of a three foot tall loading dock, um, pretty much centered of the rendering right there, um, right next to the dumpster. Uh, that means that the road or the drive right there will drop three feet in elevation. So when you have a box truck or any sort of delivery vehicle there, they can unload new uh, goods and supplies at a, at a level and safe area. Um, everything else is pretty much the same since the last um, SD. 
Um, if we want to go to the east side, this is where you'll see that addition of that campus road on the outer side. So this allows students to enter the site uh, a little bit more freely without uh, having to bottleneck at the entrances there. So um, really helps clean up the area. And again, we started to identify, you know, bike parking um, and the automatic gates to the secured um, service yard area. And then how we are also maintaining the existing memorial space just north um, of the school. Um, and with that, we can go on to the next slide and we can talk a little numbers here. Um, the existing stall count you can see is about 419 stalls. We have 484 stalls. Um, and then the future capacity of the high school, you know, they're saying about 800. We also did a, we also took on the task of identifying where we could locate approximately 200 stalls. Um, we could fit this nicely either on the west side of campus or on the east side of campus depending on how everything plays out in the future. Um, and that would bring our parking count for one stall for every 1.5 students. So that even improves it even more. So we really think that we're, we're coming up with a great solution here that's really improving uh, the parking situation as we move on into the future. And that's all I have for uh, the site. Thank you. Okay. So uh, this is Robin again, and we'll move on and talk about um, the existing building real quick. So. Um, we are going to be uh, demolishing um, the existing building that's shown here in red. Um, and then as you know, uh, here in a couple of weeks, um, the church and the uh, district office um, will, will be demolished. Um, so the colored portions of the areas around the TPAC show where we will be doing upgrades to flooring and, and, and paint. And we will also do some minor modifications uh, to the west stair uh, to meet up with our new addition. And this is also where I wanted to point out um, that in the 2005 work that was done, um, there was a stair that was added to out in the lobby in front of the gym, existing gymnasium. And um, this gets us um, the, the correct exiting um, for out of the mezzanine of the existing gym space. So that, that was the, the code reference that Aaron was talking about earlier. Um, so um, if we want to go to the next slide. This is the overall floor plan showing the additions to the east and to the west of the existing building. The east gymnasium addition is about uh, 36,200 square feet. The west addition is over 90,000 square feet. So really not a lot has changed um, from the layouts that we showed you in, at Schematic Design. Um, the only thing that's really changed is our level of development in detail. So our plans um, show a lot more uh, as far as casework, and storage, uh, possible furniture layouts and, and things like that. So I also wanted to point out that we've had um, some security meetings with Lauren and Mark to talk about how to zone the building in an emergency. Um, we also talked about locations of card readers for access control and security uh, camera placement for the overall building complex when it's complete. Uh, I also wanted to make mention that the HVAC systems uh, will be rooftop package units. Uh, classrooms will be provided with uh, individual temperature controls and then um, train equipment is the basis of design, um, but other vendors will be allowed to bid the equipment. So this slide is actually showing um, the enlarged plan of the East Gym Edition, which shows the new lobby, the 2300 seat gym, and then the adjoining locker room spaces. This edition also has the new choir room space shown in the purple, and then, um, the exonometric um, view shows you um, how uh, the gym bleachers will look. And then later in the presentation, we, we can show you our ideas for the lobby space. So the next slide shows the west edition, which is the new main entrance and with the administration in the red. There's a long lobby that connects the two-story academic wing to the new cafeteria and food service area. 
the cafeteria is designed to seat 200 kids in four lunch periods. And then um, in the, the academic wing, this first level shows a centralized media center in the orange. And then there's electives along either side with uh, special education and art. And then um, the core classrooms are located at the west end. Um, they're, they're in the blue and they are all connected to an open learning lab space. And then the exonometric gives you kind of a better idea of what the layout looks like with possible furniture arrangements. And then that red in the middle there is, is a learning, learning stair that we'll go over in, in greater detail in a little bit. So the second floor academic wing matches the first with the core classrooms at the west end. So those stack directly on top of each other. Um, again, we have science electives around the outside and more specialized classrooms in the middle. The media center um, is a two-story space. And so when you're on the second level, you can look down into the media center space as well as um, over into the entry. And so we are showing a lot of glazing and a lot of transparency. Um, you can see that in the exonometric view. Um, but we intend to use some frosted glass in key locations along the railings and the stairs um, just to minimize some of those views. So we're gonna move on to West Campus. Um, we've had a lot more development on West Campus during design development. Um, so this space is gonna be designated as the new space for, of course, the district administration. Uh, there will be some slight demolition work to upgrade the existing toilet rooms to meet ADA, but most of the renovation work is cosmetic with new flooring, paint, and ceilings, as you can see in some of these highlighted areas. And then um, the next slide shows how the space is designated between the district, which is in blue. Oops. Um, and then um, the city rec uh, department in the olive green color. So uh, Lauren and Tanya and Forrest will office out of West Campus. And this is also where your new boardroom will be. And there's a large space for staff development meetings and um, a space for wrestling practice over on the right side. So there will be plenty of space for the district to use for storage as well as for uh, growth for future learning opportunities. And so with that, um, we're gonna move on to the really fun stuff um, and talk about the exterior and interior rendering. Okay, thanks Robin. I'm, this is Craig Sarig with DLR Group. Um, we continue to develop the renderings that um, we reviewed all along throughout schematic design and even with the Tongri Strong meeting. You'll see the red cone on the site plan um, that indicates the view that we're looking at. So this is looking toward the main entrance. Um, so you, you can see the site elements that, that Josh was talking about earlier and how those have come in to be developed within the 3D rendering as well. Um, the same materials, those haven't changed since our last meeting. Um, we're, we're using the, the blonde or buff colored brick that matches your existing concrete block that you have now. And then the the red brick will be a um, will be the exact match to the brick you have now on this end of the building, and then um, we've got some metal panels and some interlocking metal panel soffits um, for the canopy, and then painted steel um, columns out front that have a little ornamentation to them, and will be up on a plinth to protect them from from weather and uh, and maintenance as well, um, and then storefront and high performance glazing um, for the balance of the clear stories, the entrances and the, the windows into the admin area. Okay, the next slide. And then this, uh, the cone again, showing you we're gonna be looking at the um, athletic commons entrance now. So an evening shot here, give you an idea, you know, what it would look like, you know, arriving for, for a game, um, get the internally lit um, 
commons area kind of as the, as the beacon, um, you know, calling you into that space, clear identification of entrance, again, using the same uh, canopy materials, storefront glazing and uh, treatment of the columns. The columns then become this organizing element to tie all of the three, the three entrances together um, from the admin down to performing arts and then at the athletic commons entrance as well. And then the gymnasium over on the left-hand side is the, um, is your, again, your red brick and then a, a dark, little bit darker metal panel um, for the upper level upper portion of that facade and that wraps around the entire gymnasium itself. Okay and then the last view would be of the, uh, the outdoor commons plaza area. So this is you know looking from the west um, into the in between the cafeteria commons on the right hand side the education wing on the left hand side. The larger um, glazed opening is the that two story, the stair that connects the first level and second level. Um, again, the same palette with, with the lighter brick and the, and the red brick. Um, and then we have a, a, um, an, another metal panel that'll just be used on the education wing and over in, in some of the elements of the um, cafeteria as well. Um, it just has a, a little bit deeper reveal and creates more interest um, with the shadow lines that are created by that material. And then again, as just can you back up just for, just for a second. Yeah, just to, to call out, we've got uh, entrance doors um, from both the art rooms that go out into the enclosed courtyard doors from the um, from the main commons right beside the um, the donkey store and then doors that will come out from the cafeteria itself. Okay. And again, these are the these are the materials that are called out on the elevations and we've talked about those. So I think we're ready for our interiors renderings. Tammy, you're on, Tammy there? You're, on, you're on mute. Okay. Okay, this is Tammy with the um, DLR group. Sorry, I was muted in two different places. Um, we're gonna jump right in and start looking at, the first look is at the, um, the main entry lobby. Um, to the left, we have the admin, and to the right is the media center. Um, straight in the back is the seating steps, um, the back of the seating steps, and straight forward is you're going into the student commons. Um, the entry lobby is more neutral finishes with splashes of red. Um, next. Um, the next view we'll be looking at is the um, kind of the seating stairs. Um, here we have like red rubber tile and um, tread, rubber tile and treads with um, the wood seat caps. Um, the glass rail, as Robin mentioned earlier, is um, with a lightly frosted glass. And as you can see with the room above that overlooks this, um, that overlooks that a frosted glass at the bottom panel of those um, stairs, or excuse me, of the student research um, studio above. Um, we've added your, we've added um, um, Tongi or Tonganoxi um, spirit elements throughout with the T on the logo of the stairs. Um, next, we're looking at a view of the commons. Um, this, 
and the cut shows the survey on the right. Um, the courtyard is straight ahead. And then um, on the right, we have a graphic word wall covering um, that we will pers personalize to Tonganoxie's um, keywords, phrases, and school spirit. Just gives you an idea of um, words that could be used. Next, we have um, the learning lab, one of the learning labs. This view faces the center core of the learning lab. In this view, we show multiple areas to collaborate. Um, to the left, we look into the makerspace lab. And um, to the right, there is like a dry erase wall covering that wraps, wraps around the core. And we also are using like um, acoustical colored baffles to define to define this area on each of the floors. Um, now we're going to look into the athletic lobby. Um, here to the left, we have the entrance to the gym and some display cases. Um, straight ahead is the concessions that are wrapped in red panels. And to the right, we have a tone on tone um, painted wall graphic, says Tonganoxy Chieftains. Um, we show um, tall tables and chairs or seating for concessions or events. Um, Next, we'll show um, a view inside the gym. Um, here we have um, white walls with bands of red um, tectum acoustical wall panels and um, painted red stripes. Um, and we've shown the Tonganoxy spirit painted on the walls with the chieftains and the T logo. Um, the, the ceiling will be a medium, kind of a medium gray. Um, and then this um, finish page, these kind of represent some of the finishes used throughout. Um, we have the main entry lobby shown, and then on the left side, we show some media center um, finishes and um, the coffee shop and student store proposed finishes. So just some examples. All right, so we're gonna go into the we, budget. We can't hear you. Unmute your screen. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. All right, sorry about that. Just had the same problems Tammy did. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a minute to talk about budget. I really wish I could have seen everybody's faces react to those images though. Those are coming along really well. Um, you can skip past this. The next slide is uh, just a reminder of where we were the last time we met with you back in February. We presented our schematic design estimate, which you can see in the red column uh, that represent where we were with construction at that time. We compared it to the gray column, which is the pre-bond budget. So if you remember, we were roughly 250,000 down on construction cost at that point. A lot of that had to do with site, but there was a lot of work that went on to get that coordinated to make sure that we hit our budget target. And then on the next slide, um, we were also looking at the master budget overall that shows where we were. So some of that savings did get shifted down into the soft 
cost side of things. But overall, we were uh, right on budget at 51400000 for your overall bond. I uh, just thought it was worth revisiting that for a second. So as we move forward, I'm now going to compare our current estimate in red again, uh, which is the design development stage, which you've just seen in the renderings and drawings that DLR shared. As you can see, we're really pretty close to where we were at schematic. Uh, and again, schematic is now in the gray column to the left. We were at 40,877,000 um, back in February, and now we're at 40,814 uh, roughly. So we are down just a little bit. Um, again, there has been some movement in some of the numbers uh, realigning with our scope. So we'll go in through some of that here in just a minute. Um, but as Aaron mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, we are overall on budget, so that's good. So what I've done here is on the left, there's the schematic design layout for the site, and on the right is where we are today. Um, and right below it, there's some cost variances, whether uh, some cost increases or decreases overall on how it impacted the budget. I don't plan to go through those line by line today, uh, you should have a copy of that. If you have some specific questions, um, we can address those as we get uh, through the presentation and we can backtrack to this. But the biggest is we're just getting caught up now with the additional parking to the southeast, the drive realignment along the east of the building. Um, that's really where most of our cost is coming into play. We had some other things that get adjusted along the way up and down. Uh, but those are the major cost drivers. In the end, we're up about 870,000 on the site. Um, and we'll go through how we made that up on some of the other areas. So on the next slide, this is the academic edition. And this includes administration and the cafeteria. Again, schematic design is on the left, design development, on the right, obviously a lot more has gone into the development of the design, and we have a lot more information. But the biggest thing that's really contributed to our savings on this, as you can see, we're about $432,000 down on the administration wing, which is good. That came with uh, coordination with HVAC controls. We had meetings with your group to make sure we uh, aligned that with the needs of the facility. With electric, uh, this honestly is coordination between your IT staff and what Forest is going to be doing versus what our um, construction team will be doing. So those are the two biggest savings there in HVAC and electric. So on the next slide, this is the Fitness and Wellness Center addition. Uh, of course, it does include the choir. But um, probably the biggest contributors to our scope changes uh, have to do with the skin as the first one on here. Uh, and I included an image down there on the lower right. Um, at the SD level, we made some decisions to um, look at options on the skin to reduce the amount of metal panel on the back side, uh, the south side of the building. Um, at the DD level, we wanted to run through that and make sure if the budget could handle it, that we could include it. But we're studying options right now. If there's opportunities on the south side, again, with limited view from uh, drive lanes, um, if we can look at some alternative materials to save some money there. Uh, HVAC, there's some coordination there. Uh, as I mentioned, on the academic side, it came down. On this side, it it actually came up once the design team was able to get through sizing the equipment for the space. Uh, there's some other changes in the choir addition. Um, there's a corridor that now runs through and connects uh, the existing campus together, whereas before it was closed off, creating an awkward loop. Um, so that was opened up. Some additional square footage were impacted in the choir rooms itself. And then there's some restrooms, um, additional restrooms there in this end of the renovation. Um, 
those are the major drivers for some of the cost ads. But again, we have some other um, design development that has reduced cost with the lockers and, and associated plumbing in the locker rooms now that we have more design. So again, if you have any other questions with some of these other ones, jot them down and we'll get to them here at the end of the presentation. Um, the high school renovations themselves, we've seen the most um, probably design input uh, in this round as far as the high school renovations. So we're getting caught up with that. Really, we're on budget with everything. Um, there's a couple scope ads that we want to talk about. One of them is the polished concrete that you're aware of that got it added into the early site package. So that corridor just north of the existing gym, we're going to perform that work this summer. Um, so we did have some money set aside there, but it was not a full floor replacement and polish. So uh, that's only worth 14,000. It's not a big um, driver in cost. Um, then the next one is the Performing Arts Center canopy. So right outside the auditorium, there's uh, a canopy there. The design team is working to make sure that that has a cohesive design. And when you're talking about the athletic center entry canopy and the new academic entry canopy. So um, the design team can address that as well, but uh, we do think it um, really is good to have that a cohesive uh, canopy where it otherwise would kind of stand out there. So there's some increased cost there that we picked up. Overall, we're not up much on the high school renovation. Um, probably the biggest swing in cost is actually in the West Campus. I think most of us knew this was coming as we were not planning to spend as much in the Parks and Rec area, uh, which equated to almost 720,000 of the savings. So originally we were planning to renovate quite a bit more space there, most of which was gonna involve the kitchen uh, renovation. So we're not spending that money. So we're recognizing that savings. Also, with the district office spaces, when we were developing the pre-bond budget and early planning, uh, we weren't quite sure what all of the reno sco renovation scopes were going to entail. Uh, so we worked with the design team and just established some kind of blanket unit prices in there based on the square footage as you see off to the left. So the district office space is 1,100 square feet at what we called medium renovation as one example was roughly $145 a square foot assigned to that space. Uh, that included some mechanical upgrades and other improvements that we aren't spending now in, today, uh, in today's layout. Um, so most of what we're dealing with is finishes, whether it's flooring, paint, ceilings. Um, so some of the costs we had allocated there just isn't necessary in our current layout and design. So that was a really significant savings. Um, this does also include updating the wrestling in this facility. So all of these numbers are now aligned with that scope as well. So pretty significant savings there, but that was very intentional. Uh, one other thing, uh, just worth note that the building permits down there, $60,000 is just shifted uh, into our scope. So we are just accounting for that, but it's really a shift in the master budget dollars. So high level, that's where we are right now. And I, it does balance itself out to the most part. Um, any savings is getting shifted into the design contingency to make sure we're maximizing your bond dollars. And Aaron will go through the master budget and if there's any other items we wanna earmark for some of that savings. All right, thanks, Joel. Um, so yeah, as, as Joel said, um, you know, as we and we talked about during the schematic design, um, the the overall master budget of the 51.4 million bond project um, at schematic design, there was about 10 million 522,000 uh, that was in the estimated soft costs. Um, that's increased a little bit um, just due to the slight decrease from um, the construction cost side of the ledger to get us to that even 51.4. So um, you'll see in the breakdown, most things are, um, you know, 
staying pretty much the same. We've got the architectural fees that are um, and based off of the uh, construction value from um, the DD budget and um, miscellaneous soft costs that have to do with some already expended funds for um, geotechnical inspections and surveys. So the FF&E and um, uh, miscellaneous furnishings, those adjusted a little bit, but um, overall are um, close to the same. It was adding a few things in that we found out during the design development process and just kind of separating out two separate funds between um, actual classroom furniture and um, additional equipment that goes um, into those classrooms just to be able to account for it a little bit better. So the biggest change really was in the low voltage and equipment. And I think this really just comes from um, not having a full grasp of what the what all the scope entailed um, at the schematic design. There was still some big unknowns in terms of the fiber work and um, the data cabling. We also made some back and forth adjustments in scope between the soft costs and um, the construction costs there. So this aligns more with what we know now and um, worked through that with, with the district and uh, forest on um, allocating those scopes out. So, um, the remaining utility and development fees, um, we talked through that during our uh, presentation on the summer scope of work. Um, a lot of those are, are pretty well known now. Um, the owner's rep fees um, obviously have stayed the same and special inspections and abatement have adjusted a little bit based on um, the scope, the more known scope of the abatement now. And um, I increased special inspections a little bit um, as we have found that there's um, some extra funds in, in the soft cost budget just to allow some flexibility as we work with the design team and the engineers and finalizing the, um, the scopes. Uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, potentially doing some commissioning activities uh, if the district is interested just to provide a little bit more um, assurance on the function of the final HVAC system or um, any other special inspections that would um, increase the transparency of quality down the road. So the biggest, um, the biggest change here is an owner contingency as we made the adjustments in the other soft cost items. Um, there's really just some, um, some funds that we are looking at now with items that were not initially assumed in the in the scope of the bond project um, that we believe now we can we can start to develop further with the design team as we move into the construction documents. So um, of this 2.3 million um, that's listed on owner contingency, really that's broken up into a couple of different things. Um, I think what the the intention here is that um, the district would continue to hold um, two to three percent of the construction cost as a owner contingency going into the start of the project. That would be for things that come up during the project, um, whether it's changes that the district wants to make as we move along or, um, you know, it being a renovation project, uh, anything that discovered that um, was unforeseen from from the beginning of the project, those contingency funds would be there. So that would be, you know, roughly um, a million to um, 1.2 million of that 2.3. Um, then there uh, is another 500,000 in there that it would be set aside to deal with um, sec day two FF&E. So that is purchasing any other equipment or furnishings once um, once you occupy the space and realize you need something that um, that we didn't foresee during the design phase um, and also just a, a small a contingency for um, additional abatement or inspections that uh, weren't assumed in um, in the above line items so with that there's you know another five to eight hundred thousand that um, I've been working with the district with um, with uh, Lauren Feldkamp and Mark Farrar 
um, have been developing a list of items that a priority list of things to um, to bring back into the project. Um, we have already worked through some of those with the design team and um, with McCown Gordon to put put some design and cost around some of the higher priority items and we'll continue to vet those out um, as we move in through construction documents and finalizing the budget. So um, to just show you a few of those things, a few of those cost options, um, this is a the sh uh, sheet from McCown Gordon's um, design development deliverable and is what they have been working on. You'll see that the numbers aren't quite in order. There have been some options that <coughs> excuse me, have been looked at and um, eliminated from, um, from this as we've gone through the different phases. These are ones that are still maybes or yeses or um, and this, I just, we wanted to share this to show you how that is being tracked. Um, we'll talk about a couple of them specifically. We'll go to the next slide. So one of the larger cost options in terms of uh, dollars is this multi-purpose room. Um, so it's an additional uh, 1,400 square feet. On the, on the left side of your screen is the floor plan that is included in the in the design development budget that um, was just presented. On the right hand is the alternate for the multi-purpose room. So you can see that long rectangular area with the extension of the corridor. Um, so that has been something the district has requested for um, additional use during games. Um, for halftime meetings, for additional um, storage of the floor mounted basketball goals um, and several other uses um, for that area. So um, the budget there, um, sorry, I think it was two, 250,000 for that room. So um, that is on that list that we um, have been discussing evaluating to add into the project as we realize some savings in other areas. Um, oh, the site plan here, the, it's a little hard to see on here, but the lighter gray areas in the paving are um, areas that are in good enough shape to mill and overlay versus do a full depth asphalt replacement. So that is something that we have put a, a dollar value to um, if those areas were to be full depth replacement as well um, and something that we continue to analyze. And the last one, the last one um, I know has been a back and forth conversation for a while and um, wanted to share this, we kind of put together um, just before we finished design development. So. Um, bear with us on the um, actual level of design on this, but um, the this shows a ticket booth, a built-in ticket booth um, at the north entry into the commons for the gymnasium. So it has two ticket windows there, um, an access door. Um, you can see on the upper right-hand image, uh, the idea would be that all traffic coming in would um, funnel right towards that, that ticket booth location. So um, DLR is working through you know, developing the design of that. Um, so it's not just a um, gray box, but um, that is um, what is being looked at for the ticket booth option. All right, um, McCallan Gordon is gonna speak a little bit more on the uh, master schedule. Okay. Hello, everybody. This is Darren Lee with McCown Gordon. Um, you know, la the last time we met, we went through, we had a site logistics video that we played for the Tongi Strong board meeting. Um, so instead of basically playing the same video, we just, uh, we provided a rolled up summary schedule. Um, a more detailed schedule has been provided out there, but for purposes of tonight, this is basically just a, a summary schedule. Um, and I just wanted to kind of at a high level go through, give you the 
um, overall just kind of time frame of each phase just as a reminder. So phase one, um, again, this summer, summer 2020, the site utilities and the demo package, that GMP was approved last Monday. Um, we appreciate that, thank you. And um, the teams out there right now, or at least they're um, making preparations for mobilizations this week. And over the next um, five to 10 days, you'll start seeing, seeing a lot of things happening out there. Um, that will go through until um, basically the first part of August and we'll be ready for kids to come back um, the first day that uh, the school has activities. Phase two is the learning center, um, the academic wing in the kitchen and cafeteria. Um, right now with documents coming out in August, we will bid that in September for the September board meeting and with the start of early October. Um, right now and that runs through the end of 2021. Within that time frame, we'll also complete the site work that um, will be within the fences on the west side. If you remember the site logistics plan, um, we will complete all the paving, the uh, um, basically curb gutter landscaping. So when we turn that building over, um, it'll all be complete with all the site work. While we're doing phase two, summer of 2021 happens and we will go into the north parking lot, um, which is you know the student parking lot there at the north now. We will complete that, those renovations in the parking lot. Um, we'll also go into the main building, um, start the renovations there. And the main focus is gonna be basically prepping that existing um, building to make sure that it's ready to be turned over when we, when we turn the new uh, academic wing over. So, a lot of the focus will be in the above ceiling work. It's gonna be making sure the fire alarm's ready to be transferred over the PA system, the clocks, um, any kind of plumbing tie-in, sprinkler tie-ins, anything that we have to do, we'll make sure that we've got that ready so that when um, we turn the uh, um, academic wing over and they move in, what frees up the athletic side, um, all those front ends for the fire alarm and and uh, PA system you know, are currently on the east end of the building. So those will be demoed and go away. So we have to make sure that um, before we can turn over that classroom wing that everything in inside the building, all the systems are ready to be tied into the new uh, academic wing. Phase three then will start January of 2022. That's the athle athletic wing in the choir room. Um, again, we'll do the site work within our compound when we turn that over, it'll start January. Um, Right now we're looking at um, latter part of fall. Um, we're gonna do everything we can to speed that end date up. But right now, just um, based on kind of what we know with some having some asbestos abatement to do in there and having a little bit of structural um, bracing to do before we can even get started doing demo, um, we're looking at the latter part of the fall of, of 2022. So um, also when the renovation of the academic wing is complete. The West Campus then will move into that new academic wing. So that frees that up for us to start renovating at the same time, um, January of 2022. So that'll take us, um, looks like probably about four months um, to renovate. So by May, um, at that point in time, then the administration ought to be able to start considering moving back into that building. Summer of 2022, um, we'll do any final renovations to the existing building and um, any last bit of site work that maybe wasn't picked up as we were, that was within our compounds that we didn't get to um, during construction. So the only other comment I've got is that the schedule, I know one of the, one of the comments that, that the board has made has been, you know, tie in schedule dates of um, school activities and district calendar into our schedule. Um, Right now it is based on what we know of the district calendar. And um, as the calendar gets populated, as we go into the school year, um, we start learning when the athletic events are, um, you know, some of the fine arts events, all those kinds of things. We will be definitely spend a lot of time with Mark and, and understanding what that entails and what we um, need to do on site to make sure that we don't interfere with those operations. So that's really all I have for the schedule.
Sorry, this is Aaron again. I was, gonna, I was about ready to ask if anyone had any. I was about ready to ask if anyone had any questions. So um, yeah, that is all we had for the presentation, and we will open it up to um, to questions. All right, board members, who would like to go first? Justin, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I guess a couple of thoughts that I had, and first of all, the it, it looks beautiful. So I, I think the I think the work that you guys did is incredible. Um, I guess you know one of the questions, you know, there were a couple of big ticket items that we dropped significantly. So electric and low voltage went from, you know, cut in half, three point something to one point seven or something. Likewise with the West Campus, but you know, it would still appear as though we're pretty much spending all the money. And I, I guess I'm just curious, you know, as a board member, you know, I'm going to be expected to account for that and just would love to get our, uh, others perspective on, you know, what would be the 10,000 foot view of where we should, should say the dollars went. Um, particularly, you know, when we looked at the delta between schematic and design, you know, it looked like the classroom wing went down, but both the site and the, the gym went up. And just from an optics perspective, that feels, um, feels like it's hard to account for a little bit, um, spending less money on the classrooms and more money on the gym and the site. So I guess just give me the, some thoughts on those two big items in particular, and um, you know, particularly the optics around where those dollars went and, and the, the discrepancy between the reduced classroom dollars, but the increased gym and site dollars. So um, I guess I can start um, with that and um, maybe look for, for Joel to step in on it too. Um, I think just in the, a little bit of it, um, as Joel was explaining through the classroom, um, one of the, the biggest adjustments downward in scope was um, the electrical, which it didn't actually reduce any overall scope in the project. It was really just with an alignment between um, the work that the district is doing um, through the soft costs and the cabling versus doing it under the construction costs. So it's a little dirt. And there's a couple other things like that that are <clears throat> a little misleading on the surface. So, um, there really was no scope cut out of of the classroom addition um, at all. Yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. However, it appeared as if the soft cost, low voltage electrical, and the construction electrical both went down. Yeah, I actually I think it was a double. It was more of a double up in the schematic design. Um, I think we were both we are carrying some in the soft costs and in the construction costs. And I, I know the, the soft cost low, vol <clears throat> low voltage number <clears throat> is misleading. And, and I'll be honest, that was probably an overcompensation on my part at schematic design of um, I'm just coming on board and trying to um, understand what that scope was. So um, really kind of, you know, that can, those scopes can eat up that money pretty fast. So I was, I was being a little overcautious probably on that at schematic design. Okay. That's fair. Um, yeah. That, <laughs> I'd like to, uh, I'd like to address the comment on the academics again. Um, and I don't know if we can flip to what page is this 49. It has our cost progression for the fitness and wellness edition, basically the gymnasium or the images. Yeah, that slide there. So if you look at um, the exterior building skin and HVAC, that includes the choir space. And 
okay. that choir got larger with some larger um, um, practice spaces. It also got taller in volume. And that had an impact on our mechanical system. Um, along with that, the next three items on that list that are 140,000, 130, and another 125,000, those three items are specifically related to um, the choir area uh, in that corridor. So unfortunately, it's kind of how we bucketed this yeah. um, with the yeah. gymnasium. Uh, overall, I think if the choir would have been part of the classroom addition, you'd have seen that it was it's probably more balanced than you think on where we're but, spending that money. So Joel, on that, it, I mean, based upon what you just said, it almost looks like that choir is over half a million dollars. Is that is that accurate? Um, the choir itself uh, contributed about 140,000. Some of the HVAC is with that. Some of the additional skin is in there as well. And the high um, are at 125 and the restrooms at 130. Yeah. Yeah, the restrooms are really unrelated to the choir themselves. Those are more okay. for the actual gymnasium and the, the account when you have a fully loaded gym. So, um, yes, there's there's a very um, noticeable value associated with the choir. I will say that, but it's not a half million. But okay, um, Joel, yeah, I there's there's a lot going with that that corridor there too. That's that you could say is part of the choir, you could say it's part of the fitness. Joel, that context is really helpful. And, um, you know, I'm really not throwing grenades. I, I think the design looks great. I'm just, you know, optics matter. And I wanna make sure that we're, you know, that we can speak to where those dollars went. So, so thank you for the, um, the context there. Um, Go ahead, sorry, you were gonna say something. Yeah, no, I just, I, no. <laughs> believe me, I, I know what the optics were. I was concerned about that too. Um, but if you think about it, we knew some decisions were being made and we were gonna have to offset those. So the, the parking, as an example, um, and the site changes that went along with the drive lanes and it had a little bit of a trickle effect out there. Uh, we knew we were gonna have to offset that and uh, some of that or most of that we knew was going to have to come out of the West Campus. So we weren't sacrificing uh, the program we promised uh, to your constituents. So we fought pretty hard to make sure that this balanced. Um, and I am just going to redirect, if you could, to slide 46, which is the DD summary. If you see there, and I'm sorry, it is in a small print, but we still have 300,000 in escalation. That's gonna get us from to today to an August bid uh, point with the remainder of the packages. We also have uh, five and a half percent design contingency at 1.83 million. That's still in the project. Um, we talked about whether or not we could go down to 5% on design contingency and we talked about whether or not escalation is a real thing in today's market uh, we're bidding projects right now that are coming in um, at five-year lows but in august we don't know what that's going to look like if there's going to be a um, overcorrection, if there's going to be schedule challenges those kinds of things so we wanted to be smart and hold on to as much of that uh, risk management contingency that we could so if anything, where it looks like optics are playing into it, it's how we manage that contingency. And uh, we got as tight as we could there. Um, and then, you know, a lot of that owner contingency down in the owner side of things, again, helps it make it look like it balances out. Um, and as Aaron mentioned, we can look at other opportunities to enhance your program uh, provide needed uh, improvements or renovations or scope um, that are outside the project. Or there's also opportunities if you look at returning some of the bond dollars and uh, reducing maybe the mill levy. But 
uh, most of the time our districts are looking to maximize the bond that they're spending uh, because that's what everybody voted on. They're willing to go to that three mill levy, I think was the point, because they knew they wanted a uh, a nicer facility. They knew they needed it. So I think that's why we've been so focused on making sure we hit your budget target and not just handing you dollars back. I appreciate that um, reference back to that slide and that detail and the contingency. I mean, I think it's a good thing to hold on to those funds is for the unknowns that possibly could be out there. When is the plan for that design contingency to roll back? Is that at the GMP? Um, so we'll do another gut check at 50% CDs. Um, at that point, just to make sure we're still on target, if the market has moved, uh, if there's any major scope changes, we want to make sure we pick those up uh, so we have uh, an opportunity before the documents hit the street to uh, correct that, whether it's adding some more alternates or uh, other measures there. So we'll check that then. At that point, I expect that design contingency to be around maybe 3% depending on uh, where we're at with the documents, whether it's 50% CDs, 25 or 90%. Um, but of course, when we hit the bid, that design contingency will be zero because we'll ultimately have the, the true value in hand with our bids and there will be no reason to carry design contingency up at that point. So I just wanna remind everybody, the design contingency there is to fill the gaps that we don't know yet. So the next step with the design team is to start detailing wall sections, start to actually finish out the details on foundations and building connection points and those kinds of things of where we'll end up spending that money. Um, so that's why it's there. Thank you. Um, I have some questions related to the. Go gym. ahead, Drew. Go ahead. I figured you. I, I had you at the top of my list of questions, but Justin beat you to it. <laughs> well, that's all right. I like Justin. Justin asks asks, uh, asks excellent questions, so I like when he asks questions. Um. So on the gym layout, um, if you want to go to that enlarged view for the gym layout. Yeah. So uh, just a general comment right now, I'm, a, um, I'm just not getting the sense that it's as integrated as the academic uh, wing that we, that we have shown. Um, I'm a little concerned with the, the space utilization with, uh, especially on that end side of, 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 the, uh, of the gym and how far back that sets from, from the court. It's, I, we, did, we did such a, I know the team did such an amazing job at um, pulling in all of the, um, the different uh, teachers and a, and a huge number of people during the programming phase of the academic wing. And it, and I'm, I don't know if that process happened here with that number of folks, because as I look at this, it almost looks like it was a gym. And then, and then some, then there was a decision to add some additional seats and that went on to the side and then, then things went down to the bottom and then the concession went on to the end back on the, on the Southwest corner. And I'm just worried that the flow and the space utilization isn't as optimal as the academic wing. Um, you know, we had we had some initial discussions very early on, prior to the DD. I think of of you know, top loaded. Um, I think we went through just a, a couple different things with regards to height of the building, and everything was, you know, we at, as we looked at that we we decided that due to cost and budget reasons, we didn't want to take that um, to go that route. However, now at the DD, we're still, um, 
you know, total, and I know the significant portion of that's due to the choir side, it's in that, it's in that bucket. That's why I was interested in how much it was related to the choir, but we're at least half a million or more over on it, even if we, though we didn't get those initial asks with regards to loading, whether it be mid loading or top loading. And I see a long corridor there, which that just looks like a lot of floor space and square footage. Um, it just, you know, I, I, I'm just concerned that the space utilization and the cost effectiveness that we're getting there um, isn't, isn't quite there, especially, I, I kind of tried to scale it out. It almost looks like from the right-hand side over to the east, we almost have another half court of, of, of space there, which at 300 and some dollars a square foot, that's a lot of money. And, and putting the people back probably 35 feet, maybe from, from the, uh, from the out of bounds. That just seems, and I know the why, cause it looks like the doors and everything are required, but that just doesn't, I'm just really worried that nobody's going to want to sit there and it's going to get a nickname that nobody likes. So I'm just worried about this. I'm just that this is going to be, especially since we talked about this being a very visible part of the entire project, people are going to, a lot more people are going to see this versus the academic wing. And right now I think the academic wing is, is looking very good. I'm just worried that this isn't quite as developed. Drew, um, I can, this is Aaron. I can, start um, a response there, but I'll, I'll throw it to DLR. Um, but going back to your comments about, um, you know, all the different options that were discussed on this gym and the input um, that was received. So I just, I want to assure you that um, the amount of attention that the gym has gotten has, has definitely been at least equal um, to the learning center. Uh, we've talked to you know, the several people within the administration, as well as several of the, the coaches and um, uh, athletic trainers um, involved with this. So um, there was a great deal of, of thought put into the programming of it. Um, you know, I think <clears throat> the room on the, or the, um, I'll let DLR talk about the space. I, I don't know exactly what that space is for that east set of bleachers. Um, that was, um, to accommodate the additional seating, we looked at several different options to get the 2300 uh, capacity that the district was after in this gym. Um, one of the options was to go to kind of a mezzanine level um, on the north and south bleachers and then kind of tuck some, um, some of those support spaces partially underneath. Um, and then there was this this extra space onto the end. Um, you know, we did talk about the top loading or the higher um, ceiling that that seemed to be, um, you know, too costly of an approach um, for the project. So um, I don't know if DLR wants to add a little bit more about how the the layout of the space and how you see the flow. Yeah, I'll take a stab. Uh, so. Part of it is the circulation wanting to allow enough room around the court for circulation during, you know, during events, um, having enough overrun, um, you know, at the, at the west end. The east end is a little more generous, but the, we've been asked to include that as a student section. So that there's some, you know, activity associated with, you know, with halftime and everything else and getting prepped. Um, so there will be more activity on that end. Um, the exits do come into play. So, you know, we had to, um, part of it is also maximizing seating capacity. Um, we have to, if we, if we would have gone higher than 14 rows, we would have had to add more, um, more stairs, more stair aisles. And then it, you start defeating yourself when you add more stairs and trying to pick up more seats and um, you know, it, 
you're picking up more stairs sometimes in your RC. So uh, we tried to, you know, we kept we kept it to 14 rows so that we could, you know, maximize the layout within the footprint. Um, the the corridor back behind um, is, um, I, I agree, it, it's it is it is wider, but um, those are teams that are moving out. Um, you know, in, in large groups from from the from the court. They also um, they wanted part of it as a safety thing for the for the um, for the players. We wanted it was requested that we find a way to allow the students to exit, uh, take be able to use a separate exit than the fans, so that we could minimize um, that that cross traffic or, um, you know, confrontation after games so that right. we could uh, improve the safety for the student athletes. Uh, it also allows, you know, the, the kids that are in the band um, and in the student section a way to get there without um, having to walk across the court. So, and it also allows us to use those locker rooms and have access out to the practice field. Yeah, my, you know, at the, at the higher level, um, you know, following uh, what Justin was saying, it's a perception because we're pre-bond. We started with uh, almost, oh, let's see, 15% larger square footage and 25% uh, lower price. So there's been, and I, I know there's been a lot of things as we found, you know, there's a wall, there's a choir, there's some additional stuff, but the perception that's a, that's a tough one to swallow just because, you know, it went from $256 a square foot to 345. I mean, that's, that's a big jump. Um, and I don't know how much is related to a scope um, over that time, but it's, it's just, and I'm, and I'm concerned there's a definite trend there at every stage it's gone up. Um. Another part of that increase, uh, and again, DLR jump in because this, this happened um, kind of right at the beginning of schematic design, um, but was the further development of this commons space in between the two gyms and really developing that into a community space that could be used for um, both athletic and non-athletic gatherings. Um, and that space is really um, developed. And then um, there were some details when we moved away from, you know, the top loading or the, the extra height in the gym. Um, there's been some additional details developed to really keep that um, at the, the direction of the district to keep that uh, unique um, quality to the gym, and I think that's where you're where you're seeing some of that as well too. Yeah, I have some other questions just related to design criteria. Is that okay to ask that? Um, yep. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you go ahead, and then um, Chris and Stephanie. I, I see you guys have got a couple questions um, on the chat that yeah. we'll, I want to address too. Okay, so my one of my first questions is, um, the uh, are we at the point to where we're programming that 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 commons area between there to as far as what type of uses it could be? For example, power in the floor for booze for, you know, if we have uh, career fairs or companies come in to present or other activities where there's tables, do we have that kind of flexibility programmed into the into the space? Um, it is around the gym. Sorry, are you talking around the gym? Yeah, between the gyms. So, yes, essentially, it's been um, you know left as an open, flexible space. We haven't really gotten into the detail of um, well, DLR might have shown some outlet locations yet, but we're still working on furniture. Um, just getting into furniture development and stuff for that space. 
yeah, it, I think flexibility for that with being able to set that up in a number of different ways is going to be important. Um, the toilet rooms there, the men's and women's toilet rooms, are those sized to support activities going on at the same time in both gyms? Yes. Um, Robin, remind me, but I think there's, there's a certain calculation for um, not necessarily both gyms being 100% full at the same time. Okay, well, what, what is the number? Do we know what that is? Um, yeah, it's, it's on our plumbing fixture count on the code sheet. And I'm sorry, Drew, I do not know that off the top okay. of my head. Um, so the we have met um, the plumbing fixture count for the IBC, the Uniform or the International Building Code. Okay, for, for both gyms being occupied and having activities going, is that correct? It's just for the main gym, the big gym. Okay. So where where are the restrooms for the existing gym? Okay, if you can if somebody can move the pointer. Actually, well, actually, yeah, Robin. Can I this is Amber? Yep. Um just to add to what Robin was saying. So so it's kind of we get the um, benefit of I'm sorry baby crying at the same time I've got to talk That's um, <laughs> we the total occupancy you you understand codes enough to know that code is allowing for a number of people in a room way more than we would ever have in a room you know a classroom would have 45 we would never have 45 students in a classroom right. so when we figure the total occupancy by the IBC it happens to equal out to the same amount as if both gyms were full at the same time so by meeting the occupancy of the entire building, we're also meeting the occupants, the, the um, plumbing count for both gyms being full as well. Now, <clears throat> that is all to say that they're not all just located right here adjacent to these two gyms. Um, because I think that that's, that's like building your church for Easter Sunday. I mean, that would be a lot of cost that would be hard to, just, to justify uh -huh. to the community. But however, the plumbing fixtures are there. So. You know, will someone have to walk down to these other restrooms that are right outside the auditorium? Maybe if they can wait, you know, a minute and a half, but probably not. So we're trying to, you know, go down the middle, be practical about it, but still meet the code. Yep. And hopefully your, com your community won't have to be waiting long lines <laughs> to use restrooms. Yep, I understand. And, and I asked that question because in a scenario where we have the, something going on at both gyms, I was because we were talking about the ability to segregate um, the buildings for security reasons um, between the art side and the athletics and the um, academics. So if restrooms are needed to be shared between them, then that changes the security and uh, where the door locations and how and that strategy. Because right now, if you were wanting to use those restrooms over in the auditorium, then you would have to open those doors and then let people back into that other area. And that is counter to some of the original discussions we had. You, you follow where I'm going, yes. Robin, neighbor? Yep, absolutely. And, yep. and something that as we get further down, we make sure we just, I think Aaron and Robin just had an access meeting, kind of confirmed where the zones are. So mm -hmm. we'll kind of revisit this again as we start CDs and make sure we've got it all um, accessible the way we need to. Yeah, and then even travel path for concessions I, is the intent to to use the one the new concession for both for both gyms, or do you keep the existing concession over by the auditorium for the one? Just just scenarios like that that you know I, I running through my head to make sure that they're covered and that we don't have a, a bust when we when we start running activities in there and, and realize we missed something. Uh, and, and the intent would be to use the new um, concession stand um, for, for both gyms, but we're not demoing the existing concession stand. Right, right. It can still be used if, if needed. Yeah, it just goes to travel path, right? I mean, and, 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 and the, the natural 
tendency of folks to enter through main exits and how and how that works and you know is it going to get it's really visible from the new one um i am a little bit uh i i don't know and it's tough to tell at this scale whether or not that concession is going to the line for the concession is going to interfere with the doors and the entrance there at the gym but it doesn't look like you could do it at a at the other side because then the line is interfering with the the flow in the hallway as well potentially so i'm a, that looks like a very congested area or it potentially could be yeah we took a look at that and that's why we angled the um concession like that um to try and alleviate um some of that traffic flow okay Some additional questions, Drew? I'll, I'll let other people talk. I think we're on the gym. I know there was a couple in the chat by Chris and Stephanie. Yeah. And, um, I think, uh, Chris, you had some question about the scoreboard and the athletic equipment. So, um, and then I think uh, Karen asked about the scoreboard as well. So the, the video scoreboard is um, we are now carrying a, um, a, a pretty decent allowance in the construction costs for a video scoreboard. And that is one of the um, increases in the, um, the gym costs that you are seeing there. So I think once we were shaking everything out and, um, you know, knew that that was something that was wanted to be incorporated for kind of an enhanced feature in the gym. Um, so that is being carried in there currently. Um, the other the other equipment increases that were in that number, Chris, um, we went from ceiling mounted to floor mounted basketball goals at the ends of the court. Um, there was um, some minor things with um, scores table and um, game clocks in the um, locker rooms. Um, and Joel, was there anything else? I'm trying to think what else was in that um, equipment increase. Those were the, the main ones there. Sorry, I had to unmute myself twice. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, there, there were some minor things with clocks and uh, the scorers table, um, uh, making sure we're lining with the scoreboard as well. But the, probably the biggest is the, the floor portable basketball goals. Uh, that was probably the biggest chunk of that. Um, and then, uh, Chris, you'd also ask about thickness of the pavement to access the dumpster and loading dock. Um, I do not know that offhand. I don't know um, if anyone on the design team has that answer or if we need to look it up and get back to you. Yeah, it'll be heavy duty because of the trash trucks. Uh, Josh, uh, Josh answered that. Yeah, Chris, generally that's oh. eight inches thick of concrete right, over go. a six inch compact aggregate base on top of a nine inch uh, subgrade that's compact at a 95% uh, proctile rate. So, so so from the access point from 24 highway to the dumpster pad is going to be that? Uh, we don't show it as that far at this point. Um, I'd have to look at the civils to see what our heavy duty asphalt section, how much that extends. I can't answer that at the moment. Um, okay. But we're going full depth and, and I believe in that area because of the utilities. Right. But I will uh, get that information for you. Very good. A little little uh, update on the on the program for the athletic area. In the pre bond, we had a total of twenty three thousand nine hundred square feet, um, and that included eighteen thousand square foot um, gymnasium. We've got uh, twenty six. Now we have twenty six two seventy five program compared to. The 23.9. So we picked up a couple thousand feet there. 
And then um, that didn't include the student section. That was an addition, uh, another request. So that gymnasium is actually closer to 20,000 now. So it actually grew in size over, over time. So, so I feel like we're hearing a, a fair bit of concern about the dollars that are spent on the athletic section. Um, and obviously there's, there's pros and cons to that, right? But when we think about the phasing and knowing that this is a subsequent phase, if there are things that come up in the classroom wing phase that would impact the overall budget. What's our flexibility to take things out here? Um, you know, obviously we can't go back to the drawing board completely, but you know, when's kind of our go no go when we when we really can't make any more changes to the athletic wing? Uh, that was Justin speaking, correct? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I think it depends on on what you're talking, what kind of changes you're talking about, Justin. I mean, I think in terms of, um, you know, I, the overall layout, square footage um, of the gym and the way it is, and this addition, the way it's designed, um, it, it be pretty hard pressed to go backwards at this point. Um, you know, this design has been, um, you know, that was kind of the schematic design phase when we're, we kind of lock in square footages. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm talking about that, that far. Yeah. Um, Aaron, I think I'm talking more of the, the multi-purpose room and the, um, the hundred thousand dollar video scoreboard and you know mm -hmm. some of those and those are yeah so the multi-purpose room we've talked about um is, is probably needs a go no go decision um sooner than than the other items because it does need to the design needs to be further developed and um but it is being kind of developed as a as an alternate right now um but items such as the video scoreboard, um, it there are it there are some design integration with the audio visual system, but there's still time on on those sort of decisions, and those are easier to adjust as we move forward. Yeah, my just my concern. This is Drew. Isn't that I think we're looking good with regards to contingency, both owner and design. My concern isn't that we, we need the money. My concern is that, that we spend the money and don't get, that people question the value of what we spent. Um, to, to talk about those, those, uh, those bleachers over there, that is a ton of space out there in front. Like if there was some way to pull those forward, angle the bleachers around and create kind of a, an end around with, with doors to the outside and exits that are at, at an angle or something like that, then all of a sudden that takes this space and makes it look pretty darn cool. But right now you're, if you're setting up there, um, you know, if you're even setting on the first floor, you're, you're just so far back from, from the court that my concern is that we're paying money for bleachers and floor space and they're undesirable seats. This is Stephanie. I thought that space was going to be used for the student section. And I think when you have the cheerleaders and the band and everybody else in there, it won't look as um, spacious as it does on the picture. Yeah, that is correct. That, that space was designed for the student section. So the prime seats are to the north and the south. And, and for um, graduation overflow space and the band. We have dimensions on that. I mean, I, um, I know. I, I pulled some dimensions off. It's to the outside of the, the baseline. 
Um, it's 18 feet to the stairs. So from the actual court to the end of the stairs, it'd be 20, 24 feet. It's going to look like a lot. I mean, it's, I mean, we have, we have a, a, a spacious amount on, on the sides, you know, considering, you know, for traffic and stuff, it's going to be, you're going to be feeling like you're setting way back in the hole. This is Kaya. I just wanted to, I, I already wrote a long email about how I dislike that area of the gym. So I won't bore everybody with my comments because I already shared them with people, but um, I wanted to just say that I have, you know, two kids that are in high school. One is a big bread club leader, I don't ambassador, whatever she's, I don't know what their correct terminology is, but anyway, um, neither of my children would be excited to sit in that area because they, they're both sports lovers and very competitive people. And, um, they don't want to sit in a viewpoint where they can't see the game. And um, I also worry about having the pep band and the students right there in that section, because anybody with sensory issues, you know, the pep band's awesome, but they're very loud. And my daughter, who is a part of the Big Red Club um, leadership, she said, you know, they work very hard on creating theme nights. And, and the goal is not only to energize the students, but it's also to energize the crowd in general. Um, so I just think, you know, sitting 24 feet back from the court line is doing a disservice to the student body. Well, I mean, our band currently sits quite a ways away because they sit at the top loft of the gym. Uh, I mean, in the far up now. I mean, I understand the big red sits close to the court, but um, I don't know. I don't know how we adjust and deal with that section. I mean, it seems it does seem expensive real estate, but it seems like there's usually ample space at our games. Um, and the students could be relocated somewhere else with the band at the end, but um, I don't know. I mean, I assume the coaches and the administration, I don't know if there's any comment on from that group on how this was all come about. So, hey, uh, good evening. This is Mark. Um, I think uh, one thing we know for sure is that the band is really loud. Yes, I would agree that the student section does not need to be right there, right next to them. Um, I do think they're more influential when they're close to the court, like where they are now. Um, but uh, that, that stuff, I was under the impression that where the student section sat we can modify that. Um, but the band is pretty loud. And if you've been to a game, even when our band is way up top, it's really loud. And I, I'm typically across the gym. So I would hate to put the band anywhere else but at the end. I don't know what the rest of your thoughts are on that. I just don't want them blasting the eardrums of people on the each side. With the scoreboard, uh, that's a great question. I think one thing that we need to remember is that the video scoreboard is largely, a, in large part, a programming tool that fits into our curriculum. In this digital world that we're trying to prepare our, uh, a, a very large number of kids for using these types of technology, and we're trying to prepare them for careers in the graphic arts fields. Um, so I don't want I don't want everyone to think, wow, that's really glitzy and fancy. It serves an educational purpose. It also serves the functionality of the games as, as it, you can put statistics up there. You can uh, put advertising up there. Um, that's just something I want the board to remember. Um, so I know that that's perception is everything, but I think in the midst of 
worrying about perception, we need to be able to explain it and, and explain what its real purpose is. I hope that helps a little bit. Is this space, I mean, I, I mean, Drew brings up a point of it. I don't wanna have space that doesn't get used. I mean, does this get, I mean, is this designed to be helpful for practices? I mean, I assume the bleachers are tracked and I don't know if they'll be out all the time. Right, um, I think, yeah. I think we're running two courts crossways for practice so that, and, you know, I don't know how we plan to utilize all this. Yeah, so I see I see a lot of that space being used for things like yoga class. Um, we've got lots of PE classes. That's a lot. When those bleachers, those end bleachers are folded up, that's quite a bit of space and usable space for our um, phys ed and uh, dance team practice, you name it, what, whatever uh, you know, we need to put in there. But it's quite a bit of space. So I believe that Tammy actually, um, when she met with the PE teachers, th there are going to be court markings underneath those bleachers when they fold back for the PE classes specifically. Is that right, Tammy? Yeah, we've got the diamond grids and ladders underneath there. Also. Um, or the, you know, the five point dots and the, um, the ladders for running drills and So it appears as if the space that's needed fits underneath those bleachers. Is that then cor correct? Correct. So, so I get to back to my point of what is limiting us from pulling that forward and, and reworking and figuring out how to handle the doors and exits and tightening that up on that end. We can do that. Those two, the north and the south end of that student section would lose as many rows as you pull it forward. And those are, it's two foot, per, about two foot per row. I, I think that there's some options available to us to investigate that, to, to make it work for all scenarios equally well. Both with the bleachers out and with the bleachers in. Because I really like the idea of having uh, having noise and stuff behind the the uh, that score, uh, you know, behind the at that end of the court. It's just that they're a long ways back. That's all. I got a question. Go ahead, Chris. How is the square footage? of this new gym in relationship with the gym at the West Campus? You said at the West Campus? Right. No, no. The West Campus gym, what is the square footage of it compared to this new gym we're building? This one has to be much larger, Chris. I mean, that one, I don't even know if that's yeah. a regulation size over there. Yeah, this one's much bigger. And there's... And we'll add it in the seating and all that. Yeah, there's only one set of half bleachers over there. Uh, do you, DLR, do you guys have that square footage? From... I, I do not. Anywhere uh, in... Pulling it up, I we think. may have to get back to you on that. Is there another quick or, or what's the thought there, Chris? I just well, I'm just trying to understand is gym space a problem for us now? Yes, it is. I know that for a fact because uh, the Phil Jones has said that several times, and so have the volleyball coaches that they when they're trying to run um, practices that they they don't have enough space to, you know, to run practice. And actually I did talk to Phil today cause I was trying to understand this gym and how, how it, they would actually utilize it. And he did say that if they push back the bleachers in that area that the band's going to sit in, 
that it he can send kids over there and have them shoot baskets in that area as well. So he said, if you have one team, you know, going cross court on the one side closest to the entry door and another team like varsity there and then JV on the, uh, you know, the next gym, then if you had any players that needed to work on shooting, they could go in that area, you know, where the bleachers are and shoot, you know, put up a hundred shots or whatever. But I also know during camps, they run into space problems. So we're buying multiple portable goals is what you're saying. No, there's, we're buying two portable goals. Um, the cross court will have swing down goals. Okay. All right. Uh, June says that the West Campus gym space is about 8,000 square feet. Oh, we're not going to have access. I mean, I think the deal is that Rec will have most of that, so we won't be able to use it for practice. I, I think <laughs> Chris was Chris's point was that it's significantly what what, what we're talking about is significantly larger, a, ma a significant upgrade. Yeah. Was is that correct, Chris? Yes, that's right. And I was just trying to understand how our gyms are utilized currently, if space is an issue, but it sounds like it might be. Well, I count. I, I don't know what Drew. I mean, I don't know. I'd like. I'm kind of curious to see what it would take to pull that forward just a little bit because it does seem so far back there. I don't know what that does to us along this process. Probably, we're going to lose a few. Obviously, if it's two foot of seat, we're going to lose some capacity. But um, seems like it might be. A I have more functional tremendous for confidence in DOR. I know that they can do something amazing. You like that? <laughs> I like it. Oh, I try. I trust him as well. Is that we've spent a lot of time? Do you have more questions, Drew? Um, oh yeah, I got I got pages here. I, I'm sorry. Did, did, did do you want to do a restroom break at some point? Because I because I actually do. I, I have other things, so, and I and I can move relatively quickly through it. Right, is there a uh, uh, quite a variety of questions from the other folks, Kaya. I I knew I was second on your list, Jim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're being so, of course, I have more questions, but I I don't have a ton of them, but I do have questions. Well, I mean, is it, how about we take a little five minute recess here, if that's okay with everybody, just to things like. We don't have a whole lot, but if, if some people need a little pause here, um, we've, not, we've typically done that in our regular meetings. So if we could do it in five minutes or less and kind of get back going here at 7.55. There you go, Drew. Okay. I think I would just have everybody mute their microphone while they're gone. Yeah, please don't take your phone or your wifi to the bathroom. <laughs> For. I appreciate it, uh, DLR and McCown Gordon's patience here with us.
All right. I for some shows in order at 755. Call the meeting back to order. Just double check. Chris, are you still there? Is everyone back? Chris? Drew is. Drew's back. I'm back. Uh, I'm back. This is Justin. Stephanie. Yes, Karen. I'm back. Karen. Karen. I'm back. All right. Sound like Chris jumped in too. All right. I think we we're going through some questions. Drew had a few more. You want to finish off or kind of jump in? Kai, do you want to go? No, go ahead. All right. So on the site, I have a couple things. Um, is uh, the greenhouse was listed as there was a, a variance is of a hundred thousand dollars for upgrades for the greenhouse. I'd seen the greenhouse on the previous drawing, so I was just curious to know what the scope was for that would account for a hundred thousand dollars in a greenhouse upgrade. So Drew, we're still working through that. Um, we're meeting with a vendor actually this week and, and the teacher um, to further develop um, that scope. But um, we're trying to be cogniz cognizant of the funds. So that that is still, um, we're still designing that. Okay, so that's still fluid. Yes. Okay. Uh, the bike rack location, just, I didn't, I think that we pro probably ought to look at that location. Uh, not a big, big thing. Um, and then I had a question on the landscaping and um, for at what point is the landscaping defined with regards to irrigation and um, vegetation and thinking about maintenance and, and around the buildings and around equipment and that kind of stuff. When is that covered? Yeah, so Drew, we have the species uh, selected at the moment. Um, they're all very uh, common locale species that are drought uh, drought tolerant, I, I should say. And as far as irrigation scope, pretty much the front entryway, uh, the landscape beds around where it says uh, entry canopy and the front door, if you will, that is identified as to be irrigated. Okay. Has uh, Mitch and others been involved with with that? Just to, you know, trimming and mowing considerations. Um, not at this point but with the irrigation um with our spec we require uh, a training with the owner um they, they re the contractor is required to provide an uh, owner's operation manual um so there will be a training on that in terms of um grass trimming and clipping um there is a 90-day uh, maintenance period uh from the point of um substantial completion once the work is done that the contractor's on the hook for at what time at which time after that 90 days the district takes over yeah if 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 the our, our appropriate people in the um in the district haven't seen that then my only um, request of the administration would be that they have an opportunity to look at that and, and if there's any comments or anything or any questions that they they uh we don't we don't want to have them come in after the fact and tear it up and do something different because they they there was some re something we missed absolutely we absolutely got it down and okay drew uh, we are um we are doing a uh, more in-depth page turn um with maintenance um the administration and going through some of these details. So I made a note as well that when we do that, that is set actually for tomorrow. Um, so I'll, we'll point that out. Okay, great, thank you. Um, that was that was all my site questions. If, if other people wanna jump, jump in when, if we're on this topic. Anyone have a site related question? Yeah, I guess I do. So on the gymnasium, we have never seen any views or if I have, I it, I don't recall it uh, from the football field. So if you're driving up that driveway or you're at the football field looking at the building or on the south side of the building, um, 
I assume that it's just straight material. There's no doors or windows looking from the football field view. And then from the south side, based on what I could see from the drawings, there's just one set of windows that look like it goes into one of the locker rooms, but then the matching locker room that's next to it, it appeared to me that that same set of windows isn't um, in that locker room. So I'm just trying to figure out what the exterior of that building looks like. The uh, windows actually go into the uh, team media room and then the choir. So those are, I think, further down. There's no, there's no windows in either of the locker rooms or the training room. Um, there are the two door, this set of doors that you, on the north side uh, of the student section that you'll see, but it's around the corner from there. The materials that we pointed out on the rendering of the, of the gym on the north facade, those materials carry around uh, to the east and the south sides. So that lower portion um, of the lock, it's a lower volume um, for the locker room area, and then it steps back up. So that lower portion would be brick. And then above that, where it steps back up, you know, back behind 40 feet or so, you'd have the metal panel above that. Does that answer your question, Kai? Yeah, I, so I'm just, there's no other, I'm just trying to visualize it. Like, I guess the west side of the west campus doesn't really have windows along it, really. I'm just trying to figure out how many square feet that is, or not square feet, how many feet along that is, and if it's just going to look I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm worried about it. The south or the east, I mean, it will be just all gymnasium. I think there was an effort to not put windows in due to the impact natural light has on the, the gym and players and different sporting events. Uh, I think uh, the question is, is, can we just get some elevations of those areas as part of just future things so we I mean, it, there isn't much to look at just so that we have an opportunity to, to see it. Cause I, I agree with Kaya. I don't think I've seen those elevations. Um, it really, ain't, at least since February or maybe before. Was that, do you have the presentation that was done to the city planning and zoning um, that we could pull up or? So we do have elevations of that uh, that are colored, and we can send those send those over. We just have to find them. Okay. Kaya, is well, that okay with you? It... Yeah, that's fine with me. And this is Aaron. I was just going to add um, that you know they the site plan that's pulled up right now. You can see there's. Um, you know, a row of, of trees there separating the drive from the parking lot. So it, in terms of from the, the football field or Main Street or even up on State Avenue, um, you would have some breakup with that, the vegetation, I think, as well. You have uh, another question? Yeah. Oh, me? Yeah, I was just wondering, so our, I just want to clarify, so when we vote um, at the end of this, we're voting on you moving forward to the new phase, and um, there was a page in the presentation on the finishes, and I think that those are not set in stone and that those can change later. So I just want to make sure that, um, that that was just for giving us an idea of what 
possibilities and the general feel is, and that's not exactly what it's going to be. So Kaya, I, <clears throat> um, there were a couple of, there are a couple of things in there and, and Tammy you can jump in if you want, but um, a, a couple of those finishes were fabric ideas for um, furniture, which have not been um, selected or um, really, that hasn't really um, become part of the conversation too much yet. So those are kind of ideas that, that fit with the color palette and that will be further developed. I think um, in the, the general sense of, you know, sticking with the, the reds and the grays and the whites, um, that is um, the direction that they're taking the interior design as a whole. Aaron, what, what's the time frame for making these selections? Um, we, we have not set a date for a follow-up finish meeting. The next step would be um, physical samples with specific um, color selections. Um, and that will be coming pretty soon. The, the um, fabrics and finishes on furniture um, will we'll follow along a little bit later and will be kind of a separate process from the, the actual interior design. Um, but in terms of color palette and general um, interior finish, it, it's really, I, I think we would be looking for some level of consensus that this is the right direction. Um, like I said, we've had two, two meetings with, um, I've tried to, I you know, focus group um, in the district to get their feedback on this uh, color palette and um, general direction. So um, we've kind of been moving, moving forward based on that input. Okay, so just to clarify, our vote, what we're voting on is basically the floor plan. Uh, yeah, the, the floor plan, um, the, and the, <clears throat> the finishes in the sense that this is the, the right color palette and um, the right direction for the interior design. Hey, Kaya, you're kind of beating around the bush. Which which of these do you not love? <laughs> Drew, they already know. I already sent emails. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? Because I I'll, I can move on to. Let's give some people up. I mean, I don't, Karen, Stephanie, Chris, you haven't had a chance to jump in yet. So far, most of the questions I've had have already been answered. Okay. Karen? Are you there, Karen? I'm here, Jim. Um, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm good. All right, all right, just checking. I know Chris chimed in with a couple, so he'll jump in if he needs to. Go ahead, Drew. I only have four more questions. So um, one, the West Campus, um, if you want to go back to the West Campus. Uh, there's the ones that's uh, color-coded for the different uses. That's probably a better one. There we go. So my question is, security and access between the different spaces. What is the intention um, for separation between uh, uh, district space and um, the rec center space? Uh, I can take that one. Um, I don't know if you can zoom in at all, June. Um, so, do you see the, that set of double doors in the hallway on the right? And then um, 
shift the drawing down just a bit. There you go. And then the set of double doors um, to the, the far left of the blue space. That, yeah, right there. Those two sets of doors will be card readered um, to keep uh, the rec and or other, dis other um, classroom functions um, separated from the district office space. So if you come in the, the vestibule, the existing main vestibule there on the, the east side will be access into the district office space. And you can come in through that lobby and be greeted by reception to go to um, the superintendent office or any of the other um, offices within that space. Okay, so what about the space if you're coming from the rack, how far could you get up into the blue area? That that double set of doors there, right? Oh. Um, uh, the double set of doors there right past the wrestling. So June, if you'd move your cursor right there. That's as far as you get. And then what about the other side, the other corridor that runs to the yeah. north? So you would have access all the way out to out north through that corridor out to the north parking lot. Um, okay. But you couldn't get into the rec space or you couldn't get into the administration space um, to the right. So part of the conversation with the rec was, um, you know, access and parking in that north parking lot. Um, yeah, but you could you could walk through the boardroom into the corridor through the HR office and cut 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 right across over into the area. Could you? Uh, uh, that door that goes from the boardroom into the corridor and HR office will be locked. You will okay. not be able to, to go will through all, there. Um, will, will all the other blue doors also be locked and keyed yeah. alike? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just a little worried about like access into the building for, you know, from the rack up and the potential for vandalism and that kind of stuff, even if the doors are locked, the hallway, and how that'll work. So that's that's my comment. There is is right now. It's yeah. it looks like the the security line is more of the doors into the rooms versus access into the corridors themselves. Where the so um, okay, that was my yeah. question on West Camp West Campus. Um, did you have further comment on that, Erin? Oh, I was just going to say, yeah. The, the thought process was to to keep the the admin, the uh, district admin space separate, um, and then let the rest of the building be um, multi multi use um, space. Okay. Which could be modified down the road, depending on how some of those other spaces are are programmed in the future. It looks like there's some other doors down here going into that commons that could have some control on them, couldn't they? Uh, um, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I think the rec classroom is the only space that would be the be the exception to that. Right. Like if they were having, they could put a lock and unlock here. I mean, kind of a manual process to lock and unlock at the right times, but. Looks like we could ad adapt some processes to control access if we have problems or before we had problems. Yeah, I would almost say you could, could you put double doors across the hallway between the rec classroom and the, or or after the future rec classroom, okay. so that at that point in time, then the rec is completely isolated from district um, maintained property. That's so. probably something we could address as we move through this, couldn't we? I mean, add, add in. Yes. Yep. Okay. Right. Um, actually, that so I only had one question there, so I'm, I'm down two questions. Um, number uh, the other thing was academic wing. Uh, actually, the admin area was where I was looking at. 
Um, I'm a, I see a lot of angular classrooms because we, we match the angle of the academic wing with the administrative, you know, squared that up, but then that creates a lot of odd angles inside here. I'm just worried about usable space and how, and just how tight that is and or corners because odd shaped rooms are always a little bit difficult to, to work with. Um, and, and what the reasoning was architecturally for that in lieu of squaring it off and, and making up the angle at the vestibule and lobby versus at the, at the corners of the existing building. Well, that was just a, that move on the angle was to create a visual interest. Um, the angle of the educational, um, wing was actually to make it fit on the site um, and then the admin is just is responding to that the the rooms i think if you look closely the offices um and, and the workroom and conference room even the nurses station uh counselors all of those are square where you get to the odd shaped rooms one is a break room, one's in school suspension, um, security storage, and then the reception, which needs that extra space to flow anyway. So it, I think we, we tried to minimize the impact on, you know, rooms that want to be rectilinear. Right. And, and use the spaces that could be more uh, adaptable to that. Um, okay. All right, um, and then the last question was just on the academic wing. Um, some of those classrooms over there, the, the entrance and doors, I'm just a little worried about, if you look, go in the corners, either of those two corners. Um, the drawings we had showed those at, at a closer angle. You spread those out, it looks like a little bit now, but just you know, with getting in and out of the classroom and what the recommend recommendations are for just so you don't have a whole mess of students coming out at once and potential for issues. I didn't know what the, what the recommendation was or the guidance or architecturally was for, for that type of thing. We, we can study that further. Um, the, the thought was we have the, the folding doors um, that open those classrooms up to the learning labs. Okay. We're trying to max. We're trying to maximize the exposure of those rooms to the learning labs. Um, I think there's a potential to slide all of that down and minimize the gap in between um, in between the two class. I mean, between the, the folding doors of the two classrooms, and that would that would push that that learning studio door out of the corner by uh, two or three more feet. Um, I, I, I think that's all my questions, Jim. Yeah, thanks, Drew. Hey, hey, Jim, it's Justin. One more quick, yeah. qu quick question. Are we doing anything with uh, HVAC at the West Campus? And does, do we know how it's zoned right now, you know, given that a lot of those rec spaces won't be used? you know, all day, every day, do we have the ability to, um, you know, not not keep it 90 in the winter and 60 in the summer in those, or is that, I mean, we can take that offline. I just, I, th I think it's gonna make a difference with what we agreed to with the rec commission. As I've been looked, I don't know if our um, team looked at that or not. I, um, I don't wanna speak out of turn here, but um, I believe, the work that um, Lauren and the staff have done um, to evaluate the costs for the, the rec center has taken into account the functionality of the HVAC it is, um, and how that <clears throat> is separately zoned. There, there is no um, renovation of the HVAC equipment or controls that is part of the um, scope of work right now. 
Thank you. All right. Um, Chris, anything? No, he's had computer issues going in and out. But. Yeah, I was just wondering moving forward on this vote. I mean, we vote. I like the plan. There's been a lot of dedication, a lot of work. But are we going to evaluate and look at some of these concerns? Or are we just rubber stamping this? We're good. We're moving forward. Well, I, uh, the most conversation, I guess, I think was about the gym. It sounded like there's a possibility of them incorporating that. I don't know if there's other specific concerns that want to get incorporated into a motion or, or, or I don't know. I guess I could look to the team for a response first. Yeah, I think similar to what we did at the schematic design, um, you know, when we presented at schematic design, the biggest comments that came out of that was the parking lot and the traffic flow. So as we, um, while the board approved the progress of the project and, you know, we keep moving forward, we are going to note the, the comments and the things that um, we need to look into and report back on. What what um, what is the timeline that we could re have expect to report back on these things? Um, I I think let's other than the gym, um, we talked about some, some small things like the security access doors and the view of the east elevation. Um, I'm sorry, trying to read back through my notes here. Um, but I, I mean, it, those things can be a pretty quick turnaround. I think the thing that would take the most time to work through is, is looking at the gem. Um, so I don't want to speak for DLR there, but it'll have to be quick because we um, have you know a couple months to finish all this up. And I'm just throwing it out there because I mean, in these upgrades that we've talked about and some of this stuff, I mean, we're at a half million dollars and we haven't even moved dirt yet. A little concerning. I I was wondering if we could approve everything but the gym area and then see if we could see a new version of that um, and approve that at a later date. And I mean, just me personally, I think that the storage addition is a very important addition. I think absolutely that, you know, there's so much equipment needed for uh, physical education classes and etc. But the, I think the current space is 25 feet by 55 feet for a storage area and it's over $200,000. And so I just, I would love it if DLR could look at the space, like look at that whole entire space and see if, if there's a version to where where the concession stand could be more central between the old gym and the new gym, and maybe a version where the storage room, that area is added, but maybe it has, you know, less storage and, you know, maybe there's another function that it, you know, that space could serve, or maybe it could be smaller and maybe the bleachers can be pulled forward. Like Drew mentioned, I guess just seeing uh, a new option, um, and maybe the answer is that there's not a new option, but I, it's hard for me to vote for it at this point when I feel like there might be, you know, a new design, you know, looking at it again, um, that would work best and still, you know, utilize the same or low or less dollars. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Cause my, my concern is that the, the gym has always been a little bit behind everything else. And so with the schematic, we had some of these we voiced, I think, some like, hey, it, it looks like it's, there was some worry that we voiced at that point. And it, I'm just worried that if, if I prove it as is without seeing it, then, then by the time we get to CDs, it's just too late. That then it, then, and then re looking at it gets, it gets really expensive or either through design or through construction dollars. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, so um, this is Robin with DLR Group. So um, either way, this is going to add some time to the schedule. It's going to take us a while to evaluate this on the gym side. So um, 
it, it's not a um, it's not a one day or two day deal. So um, right, you're and you're talking with the respect to design design yeah. time for that piece. Design. Of so technically, we can't move into construction documents for the gym portion. Right. Which would which would push the completion of construction document date, which would push the bid date, which would push the construction yeah. start date. Yeah. Well, wait a second. Um, wait, 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 wait. So, so what's the what's the time duration between the start of construction um, of the of the fitness and the start of construction for the um, academic. You're, are you assuming? So I know where you're going. Yeah, I know where you're going with that, Drew. The plan is to bid all of this out in one package, so we can take advantage of um, uh, the market as it is right now, but also if we break these up into two different packages, um, you know, you're gonna lose that buying power with trades that are there on site. Um, so the original thinking is we're gonna bid this out all at once, even though construction for the gymnasium is not gonna start for another year uh, or, or so. Um, we wanna capture this market now that we have, especially with some of the uh, things that we're dealing with right now. But if we push the design of the gymnasium, I think we would want to keep track with um, the academic wing and get that bit out now. I'll have to defer to DLR to talk about their design schedule. And, you know, splitting the packages up is not very efficient either from a design standpoint. It no, I creates two that. separate tracks and all that. So... Yeah, and yeah. So, but coming from, and the, and the board, you know, I, I can only speak for myself. I'm just like, I don't want to be in a spot to where we make a decision now based upon a one-time event that, that then we regret for the duration of the life of the project. That's, so, that's, that's, you know, with... That's that's where I'm at. I mean, is your decision the the, the size, space of the gym? I mean, the location of the. Would it be possible to have an interim follow up discussion or something like that to show an update on that and and still provide approval, but have a commitment for follow up sooner than just the fifty percent CD. And focus can on I, that one end of the gym. Is that possible? Yeah. Can I can I ask um, just for to be clear with all the um, the different comments regarding the gym? Um, can you maybe summarize and clarify? I think what the what the board's concerns are with the gym. Are we talking about just this east end um, leecher section? Um, you know, looking at if there's a way to, to get that closer to the floor um, it, and how that maybe relates to the additional um, bon the um, additional storage room. Well, that, that's my interpretation, but I don't know what Drew's opinion on that would well, be. Well, technically the board can only communicate through uh, uh, motions and votes, but as, as me as an individual, if I were to make a motion right now, it would be with the east end, the storage, and and looking at that uh, at at the flow pass from the existing gymnasium to the concession and that and that you utilizing that efficiently, which may be a relocation of that concession, but my high, and that would be a, a lower priority than the east wing if the east wing was rounded out and there was doors there and that and that's and that seating was a lot closer to the to that end of the of the field of the court i would i would probably approve it with the concession as as shown that's a lower priority for me the bigger priority is the storage and the the 
uh, east end with those bleachers. And I, that's just me. Others may be fine with it as it is or have additional things or different. Different. Well, maybe Mark or Lauren or Aaron, maybe um, you could explain to us how that 55, I mean, it's 200 and some thousand dollars and it's 55 feet by 25 feet of space that I think is for storage. So like for me to vote for it, I just would like to understand how that's going to be utilized. Maybe there's more space or, you know, more programming or. Yeah. Um. You know, I think one of the things, hope you guys can hear me okay, this is Mark. Um, one of the things that uh, we see that space is being used for is number one storage, but it could also be used for things like uh, hitting cages for softball and baseball. Um, I think it's really easy to lose track of how much storage a school and a gym needs. Um, you know, we're looking at scores tables that are longer than what we typically have. Um, and those are going to need places to be on graduation and, and during certain ceremonies throughout the course of the year. We're going to need places to get um, things out of sight uh, for seating or for the activity that's at hand, whatever that may be. Uh, there's a lot of use for that multi-purpose room. And, and just looking at the the diagrams and looking at bringing those those bleachers closer to the competitive surface, you're going to lose some space in that, and that's just something we need to consider. You know, and that that multi yeah. multi purpose room will get smaller. Could um, June? Could you go to the slide um, that showed that alternate for the multi purpose room? So first of all, I guess I want to clarify that I, the multi-purpose room is not currently um, part of the DD budget presented tonight. It is still listed as a cost option. So it's not technically um, asking for, for approval at this point. But as you can see, it um, aligns with the, the east wall of the back of that um, east section of bleachers. So from the exterior, there's, you know, one, um, one facade line there. So like Mark just said, if you scoot the bleachers in closer, um, that would then shrink the width of that multi-purpose room along with it. Yeah, but that, that multi-purpose room is really an odd, I mean, that, that's, my concern with the way that is right now shown is that you start, if you start putting storage in there, you're going to have to move out a ton of stuff to get to the things in the back. I don't know. Yeah. Unless it is used. I mean, if it's the size appropriate for batting cage or pitching or whatever, or golf practice or all of that, then the shape does make sense if that's really the use of it. So that's, that's why I was, I guess I was asking what the programming for it was because it seems like a crazy big expensive storage space. But if it's really for, I mean, if it's for other purposes, then well, it might make sense. Well, I mean, I think as Aaron said, it's at this point, it's in a, it's not even part of the package tonight, but it, I mean, it, it sounds like it's an easier ask if we, have them evaluate pulling that wall closer and the bleachers forward and reconfiguring those doors is not quite as impactful as um, reprogramming the entire gym. Not that that's what we're actually suggesting, but I mean, the room is still kind of in development. Yeah, I, I think if we move the, move the bleacher section, it would definitely change the approach to that, um, that room but that would have to be looked at alongside um, the bleachers if, um, if that room is still on the table. From a cost standpoint, I think, I believe it's at $145 a square foot, um, which is, <clears throat> it is a pretty bare bones room. There aren't really a whole lot of finishes 
um, or anything inside of it. So that's, you know, the structure, the skin, the roof, um, mechanical and all that. Yeah, I, it, it's just like, for me, it's, it's hard to imagine that that room is perfectly programmed and it just happened to fit exactly in that corner. You know, it, it's, it looks like it's just a filler spot with it. And it, that's the size it is. And we may not have calculated or laid out yet exactly what we plan on putting in there and how much space is needed. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah. Um, the ask was for a thousand square feet to get it to square up on the edge of the building. I think it ended up being 11, a little over 1100 square feet. Um, and then had to add the corridor extension um, there too. So overall the, the increased building square footage was 1400 square feet. Yeah. So again, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get sidetracked with the, the bonus room that's, yeah. you know, we're, we're still uh, evaluating. So I think if, you know, if the thought or the motion is going to be um, on the gym to reevaluate that east bleacher section, um, it, it may take a little bit of time, but I, it's not like we'll walk away from tonight and won't come back. Um, until 50% CD. Is it something that we as a team would have to jump on right away and um, see what the options are and what the impact to the design process would be? Okay. Is there any so my so understanding, if we do not vote for the everything right now tonight, then we're putting the whole entire project back on like this whole entire schedule is delayed. And if that is the case, are you talking about it's delayed a day or two weeks or two years or what's the timeline that we're delaying it? So Kaya, this is Robin with GLR group. We would need to evaluate that with the design team, but I mean, it's not a day. <laughs> And it's not a year, it's, it's probably a week to two weeks. Um, because the people that we were going to move on to the construction documents, now we need to stop and reevaluate this area. So it's probably two weeks that, that all in all, by the time we would come up with a design, get it approved, and then move on, it, you know, it, it would just take that long. So um, that How much would be are we tracking ahead from our current baseline right now? We are not ahead of schedule. We're not ahead right of schedule. <laughs> no, with regards to the overall project, not the design, the overall project. Uh, we are, we are tracking with the overall project schedule right now, Drew. Can I can I share my screen, June? I, I've done a little overlay on the gym. I just want to show everybody what's what's going on here. Craig, we also mentioned the um, the pass through we have from the existing gym to the new gym. Oh yeah. And then the the bottom exit also leads right to the concessions area too by the restrooms. That it's, makes it pretty close to the existing gym. Yeah, there's a pass through here. Is everybody seeing my screen? Yes. 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 Gymnasium. Okay, so you can see where the court was. Uh, underneath this gray box. So here, here was the uh, east um, end line or baseline. You know, so there's six feet from the court to the to the painted baseline. When we had we had this was where the um, uh, portable um, what do you call it uh, goal is. So that's the that's the base for the portable goal. And as I, I through a dimension on here, it's four foot six from the wall to the back of that, which I don't think is enough room. I think we want more room for circulation there. So then there's, um, you know, it was six foot wider over here 
24 feet versus 18, 18 feet to the court here. So um, if I, you know, if we move this three to four feet, you know, if we pick up three feet here, we're going to be at seven foot six, which is enough to get people, you know, through there. And then we make this three foot shorter. So we're, you know, we, we've picked up that difference and we just split it in between the two. So we, then our goal on the east end moves out and we've got our seven and a half, eight foot clear to walk by here. It's not, there's not a lot of generous room once we use those portable goals. So would it be possible to have drop down goals instead of portable goals? It is, but the, yeah, the request was made for portables. Um, what was driving that request? Um, yeah, I think I think um, just game experience uh, for players um, coming into a unique gym, trying to create something that's a little more unique than than our our neighbors. Uh, that's kind of what drove it. Yeah, my my preference would be to have the facility be unique and and not. I mean, the goals are, I think are a, are a good idea. But I don't want to do it at the cost of the facility. Do you believe this facility is unique? Um, I don't think it's as unique as our existing one. It's not. And that, that's kind of what, what was pushing us. We wanted to, without going overboard and creating a Taj Mahal, we wanted to create a facility that is unique. And it's my own opinion. If you take out these unique things like that, it's very similar to other gyms. It's just another gym. And we're, yeah. competing. we're competing against a gym right now that we have that this community thinks very highly of as being unique anyway. Yeah, I, that's, I think the uniqueness can come with if, if you have in bleachers that are, that are closer to the court, because I don't know how many gyms have that. I was doing some searching and I don't see many gyms out there that I could find that have in bleachers at all and none that I could see that had them set back. I love the idea of the in bleachers. I think that could create a very special type interface between the, the, um, the fans and, and the court, but it has to have some proximity. Well, we're at eight foot now. Uh, I mean, I don't know, what did we shrink down to by shifting the core? We went from. I, I, it, it goes to the, that the, that the, the, the goals take up enough space to where it creates a challenge and it blocks the aisle way. You know, if you're at a college game, you have people on the floor right around that. I mean, you have like, if you're at a, a college game, you have uh, photographers all the way up to that, you know, pass, almost past that base there. And I mean, people are right up there. And, and the, uh, and the uh, fans are right behind him. I mean, it is super close. Am I, am I incorrect there? I'm just going off my recollection of what I see on TV. Well. Yeah, I mean, You're correct, but a lot of those are um, individual chairs that they put up right next to the court yeah. before they get to the bleachers. Well, and we're, they're, they're providing access from above and not in front. Right, right, there's some differences there. Here, here's what I'm getting at is, I, I don't think we're gonna solve it tonight, but I think there's been communicated if if the motion has this in it and if it gets if it gets passed then i think the team has an understanding of kind of what we're looking for as it relates to that end no i just i was pointing i just want to point out the the extra room or trying to bring those closer is at odds with the portable goals so we've got more than one problem yeah. to solve. Right, but then it goes to 
is is having the fans closer in that experience with the court a higher priority than the goals and i don't know that i mean the, there's going to be have to be a group of people to make that decision hey drew i or craig i have a question so right now how it originally sat i think that you could put a basketball goal there and sh still shoot a three-point shot still have a, a you know tape down three-point line where you could get extra shots in in that area but if we move the bleachers up and make that space tighter does that eliminate that yeah i don't know we have to look at that you're talking about at the south end yeah um well let's see I'm just uh, you know, one thought I'm having while I'm sitting here is if we don't like that for our students, why don't we put the other students over there and make it a disadvantage to them? Right by our band. <laughs> exactly. So with this. Is that the distance over. to the goal or is the goal uh, that circle thing right there? It, you know. So I went from the, you need this, you need the overrun at, at the wall. And then, so this is from the original court plus six feet to the three point line. Oops. And then if I move it over. So the, the end of that line, that box then is where your three point line would be. So the way I see that is you've got two full court practice areas and an additional um, scrimmage area where you can run through offense right there. Um, and and there, there, is, there is great value in that, um, but, but I want you, you guys to know, I, I understand all the concerns that the board is sharing, but that, that is a huge bonus right there. Where, where we're trying to practice an entire program at one time instead of the 5.30. This, this is big in eliminating that 5.30 a.m. practice. Because there's going to be a curtain also in between the two full, full courts. Yeah. So, so is it accurate to say that the floor-mounted uh, um, goals create a constraint there during during games as far as the design of that east end and the space both on the east side and the west side and are driving the location of the court and then they create a challenge with regards to storing them for other events is that um, accurate yes but or yes and the you know if we if we get rid of the over the larger overruns that we have even if we get if we get rid of the portable goals, we get rid of the larger overruns, we're going to reduce capacity of the gymnasium. And capacity was one of the drivers that led us to this size and this shape. Right, but right now we're my my thought is is like capacity. We're not getting that much extra capacity. We're going we're less than ten percent add for our existing gym. I mean, it's not like we're, we're at 3,000 or even 2,500. We're like 23. Yeah, the yeah, existing one's 2,100. It's not even, I mean, we're, we're barely 10% larger than the new one. And that's one of the perceptions is, hey, you're, you're spending $10 million for a, a new gym, over $10 million for a new gym, and it's just 10% larger than the existing one. That Some people are going to have trouble with that. That's why I'm like concerned that it has to be very well done. Well, you're saying a 10% seating capacity, but you're not, you've got full core of, we don't have a, correct me if yes. I'm wrong, but our gym is not competition size right now. You are and absolutely this, correct. This has way more seating, capability than the existing gym. Two cross courts, and then I guess, so is there one goal at this east end that comes out of the east end? It's not, is that where it folds That's down? That's one of the things we're looking at to, yeah, provide that. Or, or we would move the portable goal. You know, you just push it back and, and have some space. Oh, I see, because you're going, you have drop downs on the side over there. Well, as someone that's gone to taking a child to that 5 a.m. practice for three or four months, I know it wasn't the most uh, enjoyable part of my 
<laughs> life there for a while. I'm so, all for it. The other, I mean, keep in mind, this is a 90, 94 foot court. So it's, you know, college size. Your existing gymnasium has an 84 foot court. Um, so this is the preferred size for high school now. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I want to make clear that I recognize that the, the court itself, the although the seating is, sim is, is similar, the court itself is not even comparable. The capa capabilities of what we're looking at here. Yeah, I think we need to consider the, the view angles or the sight lines that you have in your existing gym too. Um, you know, that was one of the things that we heard in the bond, uh, bond planning that, you know, everybody had, you couldn't see the whole court. Um, if you're if you're in the upper bleachers, so um, I think we've we've helped that situation a lot here. Yeah, um, Drew and and the rest of the board, I, I want you to be able to visualize this. We are likely to put our student section on the look on the north side, the second section in from the east. So whoever's running the cursor, maybe you could run it right there is where we would put the student section. This end cap on the east would serve as a great place during volleyball season to watch volleyball matches and graduation, uh, Veterans Day programs, you name it. There's, there's going to be a lot of good space there. But I see our student section kind of being in a, in a congruent place is where they are now, which would be that section I just explained. Well, that's a great point. How far back are you? For, where's the volleyball lines? Well, we're going to have, you'd have to look really closely, but yeah, one of the sides that are going to be rolled up when we do that, unless we're doing a single where it's just us and another team will play on the main court. But um, there's going to be seating on one half of the gym, which I, I would think is our home side and the end cap. Would you agree with me, Mitch, on that? I think he's here. Yeah, Mark, that's that's the intent for the volleyball layout. Is the one side of rows will be one side of the will be pushed back and they'll be um, <clears throat> offset for cross court volleyball. Right. That's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. Is there? I mean, we kind of beat the gym part to death. I mean, I want to make sure we don't have any other questions out there. We fully answered questions on this and kind of where we. Hey, Jim. Yes. And, and this is actually sort of for uh, Craig, too. So you have shifted it over how many feet? This is this is move, this what I've drawn is moving it over three feet. So it yes. makes the distance from in, on in the that... east side and the west side the same and you, you get seven foot six to walk behind the right. uh, portable goal, base of the portable goal. I like that shift. The only thing I'd like the board to know is, I mean, we spent a lot of time in, and gathered a lot of information on this gym and, and um, I would hate for us to put this off. I mean, I know it's not, maybe it's not perfect in your eyes, but I mean, I, I don't know where else you're gonna put the concession stand. Um, the, they met, DLR met our bleacher request of 2300. Uh, Mark Farrar has already addressed the fact that we're, we are trying to make this just um, a good game experience. We think that's important. I've had a lot of people in the community, you know, tell me that, that they don't want it just to be another gym. They want it to be something that, that, that has character and is special. And I think that's what we tried to incorporate into this whole picture. And um, I mean, I've, I've listened to a lot of the conversations and um, I do like shifting the, the gym over the floor just a little bit. And I think what Mr. Farrar has added has, has been spot on as far as the usage. Hey, hey guys, this is Justin. So on the east end in question, there's the, you know, the, the bleachers are shorter on the sides to accommodate the doors. Does it solve the problem if we, rather than those shorter sections of bleachers on the, the east end that you do a little shorter section of bleachers on the north and the south and put the doors 
instead of the doors going north and south, the doors would go east and west. Does that give a perception that the that east end is closer to the court if you don't have the the section set back? I don't know if I'm making sense or not. Yeah, let me. I think I picking up what you're putting down. So th that would be the bleachers over here. Yeah. And then you would block out here and here. And then put the doors right there going going east rather than right. south and north. Right, coming out. The doors would exit this direction and this direction. And to me, to me, the part of what makes that east end feel so separated is the sides where they're back because of the doors. I think that's a, a great comment. I think, you know, it shifts a little bit of the, the seating. Um, and we could look at how many seats that block out would, would lose. But yeah, I agree but, that but that's then, But then your sides, back. your wings on the end can get longer because right now they're cut back. Right, right. Overall, it should equal out. The only, the only overall, issue here, you're talking about the same thing. The one issue we'll have is this row would be too long to not be served by another stair. So we'd probably have to introduce another aisle, you know, right? There would be an aisle here, and then the others would have to sh shift over accordingly. So we're, we're basically picking up another aisle. We'd have to, we'd have to run that by our, um, our bleacher consultant, but that's that's my only concern in doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think there's some options here to where really where we can address everything and make it all work and maybe even reduce the overall square footage. Well, it's about nine o'clock. Is there any other questions? I'm, I mean, I think most all my questions were addressed. The only thing that I, you know, maybe since Mr. Farr and Phil Camp are on here that I, I text the group, I know the new building doesn't have any lockers for, and I'm not really a fan of them because my kids never used them. But I guess the question to me is, what's the, is it absolutely no lockers anywhere or what are we doing for kids? particularly like freshmen that don't have a car and things like that. Right. What's the, um, how do we communicate that out? Yeah, I don't foresee that as being an issue. We just, uh, administrators just cleaned out lockers the other day and guess what we found? Nothing. No. <laughs> very, we found very little. Um, I think it's, it'll be a quick adjustment period. So. We expected to find a lot in the West Campus and uh, found very little. So. Yeah, that was be kind of my perception, but I don't know what some what the overall view of that is. But well, well I think we've got through the presentation. I mean, and, um, I know we've got some questions and concerns, but I'm ready to make a motion. I don't think we're uh, going to have to move on to some kind of a vote. I'm ready. I'll make a motion. Um, I move that we um, approve uh, the design or design development submittal contingent upon revisiting the east wing of the um, of the gymnasium. Is there anything else other wording that we need to include in that? It's your motion. Um, I think that would be the extent of my motion. Okay. Is there a, is there a second to the motion? I would second that motion, Jim. All right. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the design plan continued upon a review of the east end of the gym. Um, is there any other discussion? Does that delay anything? I 
I mean, if you're talking about moving the wall, I'm sure it does. If you're talking about just moving the location of the bleachers, yeah, yes. I don't know what the impact is. So I'm assuming all impacts at some. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right now, looking back at Esky's last um, update for substantial completion dates, um, everything was tracking about 21, did, based upon the different options. West Fitness and Wellness was a month ahead or a month, five weeks. So I, I, that's what I'm seeing, unless those dates are not correct, or there's been some updates since then, I'm missing something. Is there any other discussion on the motion? If not, we'll move on to a vote. Drew? Aye. Justin? Aye. Kaya? Aye. Karen? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Chris? Aye. I'll vote for the motion as well. Motion carried unanimously. I know that causes a little bit of delay in the project, but I think um, we'll be better off. I mean, I really appreciate the team's presentation tonight. Um, I think the public and the board in general is very impressed with the project. And I guess I'll commit everyone else to being available at the earliest convenience to what we have to do to review the gym to keep things moving along. With that, yeah, I, go ahead, Aaron. Please. Oh, I was just going to um, add that you know our the project team will um, regroup tomorrow and um, discuss the time frame for um, sharing some additional information on that. All right. Again, thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, we'll move the meeting to be adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.